The well-known Saab concern created the JAS-39 Gripen E, a representative of Generation 4 Plus, which was launched in 2013. Despite the fact that at that time, the first fifth-generation F-22 fighter jet and the second fifth-generation F-35 fighter jet were already in service, and the Russians had the Su-35, which was considered a Generation 4 Plus Plus aircraft, the JAS-39 Gripen E still has many advantages. For example, it's extremely maneuverable due to its controlled thrust vector. Swedish Air Force Commander Mats Huggesson said that this aircraft is capable of destroying Russian Su aircraft, and Ukrainian Defense Minister Andrei Reznikov even expressed the opinion that the Gripen E's even better than the F-16 in fighting Russian aggression. So this aircraft has many unusual features that allow it to perform its tasks at a high level. At the outset, it should be noted that the development of the JAS-39 Gripen E, which is the brainchild of the Swedish aviation industry, should not be underestimated. Sweden and France are the only countries in Europe that have been able to independently develop fourth-generation fighters. At the time when Sweden was planning to become a NATO member, it was developing this fighter exclusively for itself, taking into account its needs. A small country with a population of only 10.5 million people could not afford to invest in this aircraft. Therefore, it needed an aircraft that would be affordable to build and operate. In addition, in a country where large areas are covered by forests, lakes, and rivers, there's not enough free space for a network of airfields. In addition, existing airfields can be destroyed at the beginning of a military conflict. Therefore, the Gripen E fighter jet has the ability to land and take off from ordinary roads. As a result, the JAS-39 Gripen A, developed in 1988, has undergone a successful modernization that's positively affected its performance and eliminated its shortcomings. The JAS-39 Gripen E is a single-engine monoplane with a delta wing and fully adjustable floating leading edge, which has an aerodynamic duct configuration with horizontal rudders forward of the wing. This aircraft has an intentional aerodynamic instability that provides it with high maneuverability. The fly-by-wire electronic control system with a three-channel redundant system is used to ensure aerodynamic stability in flight. An analog backup control system is provided for emergency situations. The Gripen E, like its predecessor, can take off and land on very short runways, just 190 meters. This means that it can use not only airfields, but also roads. About 30% of the aircraft's weight is made up of composite materials that reduce weight and reduce radar visibility. But this is not a stealth technology. The horizontal wing control surfaces and leading fingers are made of carbon fiber, while the fuselage is made of aluminum alloy, and the wings are made of titanium alloy. The Gripen E has been updated with a new engine, the American F414 FA-18 Super Hornets. In afterburner mode, this engine provides a thrust of about six tons, and in aft burner mode, as much as 10 tons with an engine weight of about one ton. These figures are incredible compared to what was available a quarter of a century ago. In terms of the ratio of specific thrust to air consumption, it remains the absolute world record holder and demonstrates impressive efficiency. In terms of cruising speed, the Gripen E is capable of reaching Mach 1.1 at idle thanks to the F414 engine. With the afterburner on, it can fly at Mach 2. The aircraft is also equipped with a refueling system that meets NATO standards. The designers of the Gripen E have simplified the repair and maintenance process. The time between flights required for refueling, reloading weapons, and routine maintenance does not exceed 10 minutes. Moreover, the engine can be replaced in an hour. The Gripen E has extensive network capabilities that were previously only available to fifth generation fighters. The Gripen Data Transmission Systems, Link 16, and the Secure National Data Link System, as well as Multi-Frequency Communication Systems are installed on board. These systems provide the pilot with full situational awareness and two-way communication with other Gripen fighters, various types of aircraft, and ground combat equipment. The Gripen E aircraft uses an active electronically scanned array radar system, which consists of several radars and allows tracking of several targets simultaneously not only from the direction of flight, but also from the sides and rear. In addition, the aircraft is equipped with the Skyward G All-Angle Electron Optical Detection System, which operates in the thermal range and allows targeting in a passive mode using radar to reduce visibility. Only the Russian Su-35 and Su-57 fighters and the American F-35 have such a system, and the F-22 plans to implement it in the future. 
Grip and E pilots are provided with fifth generation fighter level situational awareness through the radar warning receiver and missile approach warning, which provide warning of enemy radar jamming and approaching missile heads. SAV's chief test pilot, Michael Olson, says these onboard systems are a big difference from other multi role Grip and E's because they're specifically designed to see everything around Sweden, including Russia's S 400 air defense system in Kaliningrad. Another advantage of the Swedish fighter is its electronic warfare system, which can be described by technical parameters such as power and frequency of operation. However, a more convincing proof of its effectiveness is the fact that during the exercise, the Gripen E was able to land unnoticed on the right wing of a German Typhoon fighter jet, thanks to the fact that the electronic warfare system suppressed the detection sensors installed on the Typhoon. Of course, in a real battle, such a technique would not have been effective and the enemy would still have been shot with missiles from a standstill. The Gripen E has another significant advantage, the introduction of artificial intelligence into the control system. This, together with the widescreen display, facilitates the pilot's decision-making process and provides crucial assistance during operations. Thanks to artificial intelligence, information is presented in a pilot-friendly format which allows for the selection, aiming, and launch of weapons in maximum coordination with other members of the Tactical Aviation Group. In other words, if artificial intelligence believes that one missile is enough to destroy a certain target, then one aircraft from the unit will open fire on that target, while other aircraft will destroy other targets. This avoids accidental collision of two aircraft with the same target. Despite the fact that software is one of the fastest aging components of the airplane, the Swedish developers of the Gripen E came up with a solution that allowed them to prevent this problem. They separated the software responsible for the operation of various systems from the critical flight software. This means that when Gripen E systems were upgraded, the required software can be easily updated without repeating the certification process. In other words, updating the software on the Gripen E is as easy as updating your smartphone. This reduces the cost of operating the aircraft over its entire service life. In addition, this solution allows countries operating the Gripen E to flexibly customize the aircraft's avionics to meet their needs. The developers claim that with the Gripen E, users can conduct combat operations on the first day of a conflict, learning and adapting the software to ensure a combat advantage the next day. The main weapon of the Gripen E is the MBDA Meteor Long Range Missile, which is equipped with a jet engine can reach speeds of up to Mach 4 and has a range of over 100 kilometers. It's worth noting that the Swedish Gripen uses a more advanced version of the Meteor missile with a two-way communication channel, unlike the French Rafale. In addition, another weapon of the Gripen E is the short-range Iris T missile. The Iris T missile has a sensitive seeker and can maneuver with a 60-fold overload, which allows it to intercept small targets including anti-aircraft missiles and air-to-air -air missiles that can be launched by the enemy. The maximum takeoff weight of the missile is 16.5 tons. As for the combat range, due to the increased fuel volume, it's 1,300 kilometers, while the F-35 has a combat range of only 1,080 kilometers. The Gripen E spends less time on the ground and more time in the air due to its low maintenance requirements per flight hour. As for the price, there's no data on the cost of the Gripen E. However, for example, its predecessor, the Gripen JAS 39A, has maintenance costs of $4,700 per flight hour, which is half that of its closest competitor, the single engine F 16. In other words, we have an inexpensive, compact, and easy to maintain aircraft that has advanced electronics and even artificial intelligence. We can discuss for a long time whether it can shoot down Russian ground attack aircraft. But the war in Ukraine proved that even with the dilapidated Ukrainian air defense system, Russian aircraft, including Su-57, do not try to enter its range, and there was not a single close flight between Ukrainian and Russian fighters as all the aircraft were shot down by long-range missiles. So why are stealth and ultra-maneuverability needed in this conflict, which is limited to the region? More important are the ease and cost of operation as well as the ability to use runways of any quality. For example, in order for the Ukrainians to use F-16s, they'll have to modify their airfields. We may see Swedish Gripen aircraft in the skies of Ukraine, as recent events indicate an increase in the need for modern weapons in the area. Do you think the Gripen E and Russian Su-35 will be able to fight in the air? Write your opinion in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you don't want to miss new stories about modern weapons on our channel, subscribe to it. See you next time.